Okay, welcome back. This is part four of our matrix setting series. I'm Shelley Letwin from GV Design Canada. Today we're going to talk about prong set or claw set. And you can see here I have an eternity band and I've got this pendant. They're both with shared claws or shared prongs. I'm just talking about guidelines for you to follow in order for your setter to be able to set the stone safely. So again, these are guidelines as I keep stressing on every video. If your setter does not agree with me, then listen to them because they're the ones ultimately setting it. So you'll have to make it the way they want you to. Now I've been using Matrix for over 20 years and teaching it. So this is what I have found that works for most setters, not all setters, but most setters. So hopefully you'll find some things in these videos that are helpful. And even if you're a long time user of Matrix, I hopefully you like some of my tips and tricks here. Okay, so with this Eternity Bam, I actually used 2.5 millimeter stone. So I actually used in the builders, I used Eternity Band Builder to lay out the stones. Now, in another video when we were talking about bezels, I did talk about the distance from the culet. Now let's find the culet. If, so if I come up to the through finger viewport arrow and turn on wireframe, so in a previous video, I was recommending that you had at least one millimeter from the bottom of the culet to the bottom of the bezel. Now in our case here, because this is an eternity band, now if we go into the measure and go to horizontal dimension, if I go from the inside to the top of the stone, that's two millimeters. And that's okay in between the fingers. If you end up making this two and a half, they're gonna start to feel it and definitely anything over three millimeters is gonna be uncomfortable when she tries to shake someone's hand. So you can see here, I could have had these stones raised up a little bit higher so that we have a little bit more distance between the culet. Because it is important because after casting, the jeweler's going to come in here and they're going to want to, you know, sand the inside and you don't want them to grind or polish too much and have that too thin. So what is my measurement? How, how much of a distance do I have here? Okay. Half a millimeter. So that's, that's pretty good, but ultimately you want one millimeter, but again, you're going to have some clients that want it set as low as possible. Okay. The other thing about this eternity band is the bezel is very close to the girdle and that's going to help the setter be able to set stones all at the same height. I've had a setter make me redo things when, so if I select this, edit the bezel. When I had the bezel farther down like this, they did not like it. They wanted it all raised up as close to the girdle as possible. You'll notice here on this pendant, I made this a while ago, so you can see that they're set up a little bit higher. But when these under bezels are close to the girdle, that's gonna really help the setter. The other thing, if you look, some people don't like this look, but some people want me to do the bezels like this because they believe that it makes the diamond look a little bit bigger. I like using this just because I'm not going to have any gaps anywhere where investment can collect. So let me just show you what I mean. This under bezel, let's just put this on blue so that you can have a better look at it and let's hide purple. Okay. So this is the shape of this where we've got the bevel or chamfer, but when I go to edit the bezel, my bezel scale is 133% versus 100% because I want this metal to overlap. And if we added this bezel and I went and chose this um, straight wall, so let's just go with this guy. There we go. 
and hit select and then let's pull this in and I've got to pull this back and press enter now when I go to match attributes so let's right click on Gemo 3 I'm going to hold down control to deselect all those stones and this one tap F6 match attributes choose the object which is the stone choose bezel and create there's my setting so these are touching which is good but if we brought back purple now I'm gonna have problems here okay so let's hide this and let's hide that and let's see see it's this gap here I do not want that I don't want investment to get trapped it could be a pain in the butt cleaning that out so let's right click on blue here and delete these I do have customers that really don't like this look at all but their jeweler likes this because it's way easier to clean up so let's just select this match attributes select it again bezel and create oops nope wrong bezel it remembers the last bezel that you do so let's go match attributes with this guy no again that was the last one wasn't it okay okay let's go back gallery rail it's actually a gallery rail we'll click on here and you can see here I've made these shapes and saved them into the library here now what was I I was at 133 percent give or take there we go and press enter okay so those are the gallery rails or under bezels and you can see here no gap it's going to be really easy to clean okay now let's talk about the height and the width of these prongs so if I select it tap F6 and I go back to edit prongs okay so let's go look at what my measurements are here I've got the diameter at one millimeter it is a shared claw so I might be on the heavy side but I also want the stones to be secure the other thing too is what is my height the large prong height okay so the height always defaults at 0.8 millimeters some setters are cool with that I've also had other setters going please give me as much metal as you possibly can okay so it's up to your setter on how tall they want it a lot of times if the stones like if they're bead set in a channel I might bring it down well we'll talk about it then I'll bring it down to 0.5 but in our case here I'm just going to leave it at that 0.8 we'll press enter you can see here that my prongs actually need to be trimmed out so if I go into cutters and cut to finger rail there we go it's nice and trimmed out there okay the one thing with prong set if your client wants a really skinny look very very fine look the best one is prong set so even here I didn't use this beveled under bezel you can see here I used a sort of a rounder one and you can see they're not touching I could run into problems here but they definitely can clean in there quite easily they could get in there with a brush or tumble it but when you look straight down on it you actually see no metal on this so this is the finest look that your client can get just plain old claw set or prong set with a gallery rail or an under bezel okay now since this is a pendant here my prongs are a little finer but not that much if I select my prongs and click on edit prongs you can see here that I've left this at 0.7 and again because it's shared if we had four cloths so if I switch it over from this one shared one side to the four claws or four prongs then I have no trouble to pull this in 
and make this a lot finer. I might even go to 0.4, might be a little bit on the light side, uh, but somewhere at 0 0.4, 0 0.5. It is a pendant, it's not gonna get a lot of wear and tear, so we're okay with that. And again, with the height is 0.6, and I might even bring this down to 0 0.5. I've even had a setter get after me that I made the prongs too tall on one job, so. Now I go over and I chit chat with him and say, okay, how tall do you really want this before I even start the project? And then he seems to be a bit of a happy camper, but this is not going to be a good thing for us because look at, well, the claws are barely touching right there. So I, I would definitely switch these out. So if we edit the bezel, definitely would want this to overlap some way. And now I have to go cut that out. But I do want to have a connection between these. But if I even have a connection here, guess what? Big gaps, big place for the investment to, to uh, get trapped. Okay, so prong set is going to give your customer the finest look. If they're shared claws make sure that they're beefed up enough that they're going to be able to hold these two stones okay so this video is short and sweet again this is Shelley Letwin from GV Design Canada we are working on a series of matrix settings I also teach online classes there's videos to purchase as well if you want to learn matrix primary intermediate advanced so thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. And I hope I see you for part five.